and those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. Friedrich Nietzsche. Today, let's talk about my favorite philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher from the 1900s who had had probably one of the most influence in all of modern philosophy, literature, art, and everything else, right? Even our concept of self-realization seems to originate from a lot of his work. Hey, this is Bipin and welcome to A World Within, where I try to answer the fundamental questions in life with the help of readings, reflections, art, and affirmations. And honestly, anything else that can help me understand this world just a little bit better. Well, on that regard, today I want to talk to you about Nietzsche, my favorite philosopher, and my favorite book of his, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. I'm gonna go over maybe some of my favorite quotes from Nietzsche and explain them in the context of his larger philosophy and how they are applicable to the current world, the, to the current mentality, and how it can help us aim for a better life, a better society in general, right? So, first things first. Who is Nietzsche? Well, Friedrich Nietzsche is a German-born philosopher from the 1900s. He was um, one of the most prolific philosophers of his time and even to this day influences almost every single theorist, philosopher, literature work or anything else that you can think of. And some of the um, you know major names that he's influenced are Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, uh, John Paul Sartre, and a lot of philosophers from the 20th and 21st century. Right? Nietzsche was a major critic of religion. Right? He uh, believed that these religions and other world theories were um, giving people easy way out to finding the answer to the questions they have in life. Because what Nietzsche believed was that each of us have these questions that we want answered in our life. Who are we? What is our purpose here? Um, do we belong in this world and everything else? But what he thinks is that religion and these other practices in the world, even secular practices, influence people uh, towards being lazy towards giving up on finding those answers and just following on this prescribed path that will lead you to some form of content or happiness that would be difficult to achieve had we had to um, find the answer to these complication, to complicated questions ourselves, right? So he was definitely a big, big critic of religion or any other worldly theory that gave people a way out of trying to find these complicated answers themselves. One very important concept that Nietzsche talks about throughout his later works is will to power. And uh, will to power, he believes, is the fundamental drive to what we do in our lives, to pretty much everything that we do in our lives. And will to power uh, for Nietzsche isn't the power that we think about in regular terms, right? It's not being a CEO of a company so you have power over large groups of people. No, it's not being a king or being uh, strong or anything else like that. Power for Nietzsche is your uh, desire to find and live who you are. So. Nietzsche believes that each of us live a life desiring to find out and live our truth, our true selves. And that relates very much to more modern concepts of self-realization by Carl Roser and a bunch of other psychologists. And now a lot of these uh, older enlightenment um, concepts from Buddhism and Hinduism are also coming into the Western world and all of these are what I believe Nietzsche talks about in terms of will to power, right? Self-realization, um, understanding who you are and living that truth. And that Nietzsche believes is the fundamental drive to who we are. One of the quotes that you most likely heard uh, by Nietzsche is God is dead, right? 
and that quote is taken out of context a lot of times and people have misunderstood uh, that quote a lot and I kind of wanted to take this chance to explain to you what I have understood based on Nietzsche's philosophy and the overall idea of um, his knowledge, his concept and his view of the world and I believe that when Nietzsche says God is dead he is not literally saying that God is dead but rather with the advent of science and technology and everything um, we as humanity have uh, forgotten to see and understand God in the same way we had done before. Now let me elaborate, right? So Nietzsche always believed that humans have this fundamental desire to find the answers to these very complicated questions in their life, right? And historically religions have uh, provided a good um, easy path for people to reach that um, answer and hence be content with their life so they can focus on existing per se. But now what Nietzsche is fearful is that with science and secularism taking over the world, um, now people don't have the option to just go and um, you know, uh, find the answer to this question through a religion. So people are stuck in this void of nihilistic thinking uh, that ends up not creating as much positivity in the world, right? That, that ends up not leading for us as humans to develop in any other way. So um, that's the main thing that uh, Nietzsche is worried about, right? He's worried that all of this is gonna make people miserable, more depression and anxiety and just more troubles all around. So he believes that we as humans have killed God due to our lack of faith, due to our science and technology and everything. But that also doesn't mean that Nietzsche is a religious uh, maniac. No, Nietzsche just understand that it is upon our human nature to find these answers, right? And if we don't have something like religion to give us these easy answers, then a lot more people are in trouble. So it's a weird thing, right? Anyway, so God is dead, I think that's what I have understood at least from what I've read of Nietzsche. Yeah. Nietzsche as a philosopher believed more in perspectivism rather than an ultimate truth, right? And this quote kind of sums up what I mean. There are no facts, only interpretations. And what I believe he means is that each event, each thing that happens uh, could have been understood and interpreted by different people that were involved in that time frame differently, right? Based on the experiences someone has with the uh, current event, based on the experience they've had, based on the experience their people that they know have had regarding this one topic, people are gonna see it differently. People are gonna interpret it differently, right? So even though one thing could have happened, now, if a hundred people see that thing happen, there will be hundred different perspectives, hundred different stories, hundred different interpretations, even though it was one thing that happened. So Nietzsche does not believe that there can be an ultimate truth to things, but rather there are different perspectives and different interpretations of that truth. One very interesting thing about Nietzsche is that his later works start focusing very much on the power of the individual, specifically the creative power of the individual to get rid of the traumas that they've gained throughout their lifetime and form their own identity, new rules and new way of living their lives. And Nietzsche believes that for someone to get to that point is very, very difficult. However, if someone is at that point, then they have created a overmensch, a individual that is beyond and above humans of his environment, right? A man that has uh, surpassed the nature of human itself. So that actually leads me to my favorite book by Nietzsche, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Now, this is a very, very interesting book. 
mostly because um, you know it accumulates a lot of Nietzsche's thought process towards the end of his life it accumulates a lot of what he probably went through and developed into as he lived his life more and more full right so a lot of it's more extreme ideas and more extreme theories that um, are heard about from earlier in his life aren't as present in these uh, this almost feels like a more peaceful side of Nietzsche right and uh, you know when you read this book uh, you always question where is his nihilism right because uh, it's almost an optimistic view of the world the way Nietzsche writes this book because now let me tell you the story of um, the book right at least the setup of the book now it says thus spoke Zarathustra and this person Zarathustra is the person that we want to talk about this is supposed to be a i believe greek sorcerer from a very long time ago some believe to for him to be alive back in 900 bc and some believe he was alive a lot closer to us now however um he is uh, a wise says that um you know is known to be wise <laughs> i don't know but um so his real name was Zoroaster and his friends called him Zarathustra. So this story Nietzsche kind of picks up from that mythical uh, concept of Zarathustra, right? It's a fictional account of Zarathustra but it almost feels like Nietzsche is filling in after what Zoroaster had said in his time, the way that this is written, right? And this is uh, kind of like the story of it. So. Uh, when Zoroaster turns 30, he gives up everything in his life and goes up to the top of a mountain and lives in a cave for 10 years. And when he's there, he contemplates on the answer to these big questions in life. And ultimately, he gets enlightened. Now, after being up there for a very long time, what he realizes is that now the weight of this knowledge the weight of these answers and these ideas in his head was too much for him to take by himself so he wanted to go ahead and share it with the people of the village nearby right so when Zarathustra goes down to the village you know at first he's ridiculed uh, when he tries to tell people about his theories and his ideas and um, all of these concepts that people have not heard about people do not want to hear that people do not understand and Zarathustra now is on this path of trying to convey his message to the world before I put the book away let me read this code because I absolutely love this code remain true to the earth my brethren with the power of your virtue let your bestowing love and your knowledge be devoted to the meaning of the earth. Thus do I pray and conjure you. Let it not fly away from the earthly and beat against eternal walls with its wings. Oh, there hath always been so much flown away virtue. Lead, like me, the flown away virtue back to earth. Yeah, back to body and life that it may give to the earth its meaning, a human meaning. Remain true to the earth, my brethren. Don't take your virtue, your knowledge, your brilliance and escape into the eternal worlds, right? Don't uh, mysticize things. Stay in the earth. Uh, return to your body and your soul. Return to who you are as a person. Return back to this earth so you can give this earth the love the knowledge that you've gained from it. Give this earth the description, give the earth the understanding that you have achieved of it through your human experiences, right? If you have understood something of this world, if you have found some answer to this world, why would you not share it and spread it and help everybody else understand that answer, right? Because it's not about us, because it's not about us. It's about all of us, right? It's all of us go or none of us go. Either all of us together become a enlightened being that lives for eternity or none of us become so. So that's it. That's it for me today, guys. Um, that was a 
great time talking about my favorite philosopher Nietzsche. I really hope you guys uh, read more about Nietzsche, uh, read about his philosophy, uh, how he's influenced a lot of modern thinking as well, because you know uh, his ideas of self-realization and Ubermensch, Superman, are very very important and could be very helpful in guiding us towards um, who we want to be in life, right? I definitely want to make a few more videos on Nietzsche because um, you know he's my favorite uh, philosopher and I could literally make hundreds of videos on probably just Nietzsche. I could uh, make hundreds of videos on probably just this book. That's how deep his philosophy is, that's how intense and that's how thorough he is thinking about all of these. So definitely read Nietzsche if you're anywhere near interested in philosophy, in life, in doing better in life, in trying to understand yourself better, trying to understand your own strength better, definitely give Nietzsche a read. You're gonna have to struggle through the first couple of reads because he his language is very tough, but hey, you got this. Anyway, that is it for me today guys. Make sure you leave me a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next week. Namaste.